Hi everyone, I'm Hextasy, and have you ever noticed how many Pokédex entries are about the Pokémon just being straight up menaces to society? They're doing all sorts of terrible things, from kidnapping to war crimes to abuse against elephants specifically. So today, I thought it'd be fun to try to beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokémon Sword using only Pokémon that I think would be criminals. For our starter, we're gonna grab Scorbunny and aim him Billy. Now, on the surface, it doesn't look too bad, but once it evolves, that's where the problems begin. You cannot convince me that Rabu wouldn't roundhouse kick his mom and punch holes through the wall the second he gets his Xbox taken away. So, we're charging him with assault and destruction of property. And honestly, I don't see things getting any better for him once he evolves into Cinderace. Heading over to Route 1, we can add another Pokémon to our team. A Nicket, who we catch and name Finn. His crime? Burglary. We then head over to the wild area to search for another encounter. Onyx? He's scary, but I, I don't think he'd do anything bad. Noibat? I can only see him getting a noise complaint called in on him. I don't see him getting arrested. But I do see Wingle getting arrested. Welcome to the team, Albert. His crime? Drug trafficking. Afterwards, we get into a quick scuffle with Hop, but he's no match for Billy. And with him out of the way, we have access to two more encounters. At Route 3, we catch Sal the Zigzagoon, who's wanted for identity theft. And we can head into the creatively named Galar Mine number 1, where we catch Cassidy the Woobat, who has just recently violated several restraining orders against her. Next up is our first battle against Bede, but because we have a dark type on our team, he is literally the biggest pushover. Not long after that, Billy evolves into a Rabu, Finn evolves into a Thievul, and Sal evolves into a Linoon. And with that, we're ready to take on Milo, the first gym leader. Milo opens with his Gossifleur, and we send out Cassidy, who manages to quickly take it out with just a couple air cutters. And in comes his Dynamax Eldegoss. We outspeed and hit it with an air cutter, but we only take out about a fourth of its HP before it hits us to half HP with a max overgrowth. So, we gotta get Cassidy out of there. We swap into Finn, expecting it to go for a max strike, but it just uses another max overgrowth, bringing us just below half HP before we're healed. There's a solid chance we won't survive another hit. So, we swap into Billy, who takes a max overgrowth much better. And that being Eldegoss' third turn of Dynamax, it returns to normal. And now Billy is free to take it out with just a couple flame charges, winning us our first gym badge. With him out of the way, we now have access to Route 4, where we can find our next encounter. Jesse the Stuffle, who's on the run for manslaughter. And on top of that, we can head back to the wild area, where we find Chloe the Krabby, whose money laundering scheme has recently been busted wide open. Billy beats the snot out of Hop's team again, and with that, we can take on Nessa, the second gym leader. And her biggest crime? is those shoes. Anyways, she starts with her Goldeen, and we send out Sal. We outspeed and land a Seed Bomb, just missing the KO, and it goes for an Agility, doubling its speed. So, it outspeeds on the next turn, and hits us with a Horn Attack. Luckily, it doesn't do too much, and we can take it out with a Throat Chop. Aracuda is in next. It hits us with an Aqua Jet, leaving us with just over half HP before we take it out with the Seed Bomb. Finally, we have to deal with her Dynamax Dreadnought. We outspeed and land a Seed Bomb, leaving it at just over half HP, and it uses Max Strike, bringing us down to just 3 HP. So, we have to swap out. I begin debating over which Pokémon to send out next, and unfortunately, I haven't yet realized that I might be what most people call illiterate. I send out Jessie, thinking her ability cuts the damage from physical moves in half. 
but her ability doesn't work like that. In fact, it doesn't work at all, because she's dead. We bring in Finn next. He has to tank a max strike, bring him pretty low, but his citrus berry heals him up. And in retaliation, we land a snarl, bringing Dreadnought down to about a third of its HP. And because that was his third turn of Dynamax, it returns back to normal. Thinking Finn has a chance now, we go for another snarl. But Dreadnought outspeeds and lands a Razor Shell to KO Finn. Well, that sucks. We send in Chloe next. And she survives the Razor Shell much better. But we're hit by the defense drop. So if there's no guarantee, we'll survive a second hit. So after we land our Metal Claw, we have to switch out again. We send in Albert who survives the Razor Shell on just 13 HP before his Citrus Berry heals him. And on the next turn, we can outspeed Dreadnought and take it out with a Water Pulse, earning us our second Gym Badge. Well, that was rough, but at least now we can catch a couple new Pokémon. Starting with James the Scraggy. Now, he actually has never committed a crime. He was framed. But we're still gonna take him with us. On top of that, we're also going to grab Anne the Binnacle, who has recently been discovered to be running an underground fighting ring. And in addition to that, we also evolve Cassidy into a Swoobat, and everyone's least favorite drug dealer into a Pelipper. We have another fight with Bede next, but his Solosis can't do anything against James, and after it's taken care of, Cassidy is free to sweep his entire team. We make our way deeper into the slightly less creatively named Galar Mine number 2, and we have a fight with some Team Yell Grunts. The Pancham uses Arm Thrust against James, and unfortunately it hits 5 times, dealing just enough damage to kill James. Well, this blows. We have a fight with Marnie next, but it's relatively uneventful. But beating her gives us access to the third gen where we can catch Clyde the Sizzlipede, who is currently wanted for high treason. <laughs> and since we're here, we can take on the gym leader, Kabu. He opens with his nine tails, and we send out Albert. Albert's drizzle ability immediately makes it rain, cutting the power of Kabu's fire type moves in half. Nine tails outspeeds us and hits us with a will o wisp, burning us. And in retaliation, we land a scald leaving it alive with barely any HP left. It lands a critical hit quick attack on the next turn, not doing a whole lot of damage, and it goes down to a second Scald. Next in is Ninetales. It outspeeds us and hits us with a bite, but luckily we don't flinch, and a single Scald takes it out. And finally, we have to deal with his Gigantamax Scorch. We're the ones outspeeding this time, and we land a hard Scald, bringing it below half HP before it can land a max flutter by. It brings us below half health as well, but because we're holding a citrus berry, we're healed and we go back above half. Now unfortunately, max flutter by lowers our special attack, so Santa Scorch ends up surviving a second scald off of barely any HP. But its max flutter by isn't enough to take us out, and the third skull does the trick, winning us another gym badge. Once the fight is over, we can evolve Chloe into a Kingler, and Clyde into a Frick. How did I forget its name? We literally just faced one. He evolved into a Senta Scorch. For our wild area encounter, we catch Bonnie the Maractus, who has murdered 13 and a half people. And once we reach Route 6, we can catch Mary the Silicobra, who is actually a hitman for hire. So that's going to be useful. Next up, we have another battle with Hoth. This time, he's opening up with the Cramorant, so we send out Cassidy. We land an air cutter before it hits us with a dive, dealing a solid amount of damage. We land a Confusion on the next turn, and Confusion confuses Cramorant. <laughs> but it powers through and uses Dive again. So, we swap to Chloe, but Cramorant hits itself in confusion while underwater in the desert. 
and it immediately gets yeeted back up while deep throating a Pikachu. It outspeeds us on the next turn and lands a Fury attack, not doing a lot of damage, and we can take it out with a stomp. But unfortunately, we're also paralyzed. Grookey comes in next, so we swap into Clyde as it uses Screech, and thanks to our white smoke ability, we're immune. It hits us with round, not doing a lot of damage, and we can take it out in one hit with a flame wheel. Next in is Hop Silla Cobra. We land a flame wheel, bringing it below half HP, and it hits us with a glare, paralyzing us. It outspeeds on the next turn and lands a brutal swing, not doing a lot of damage, but we're paralyzed and can't move. Silicobra then uses Dig, avoiding our next flame wheel. We take this time to swap to Albert, who's immune to the incoming Dig, and then he can outspeed and take out Silicobra on the next turn with a Scald. All that's left is Toxel, but we can swap into our own Silicobra, who takes it out in a single bulldoze, winning us the fight. Not long after the fight, Mary evolves into a Sandaconda, and Billy evolves into a Cinderace. With those two evolved, we're ready to take on B, the fourth gym leader. B opens with her Hitmontop, and we send out Clyde. Thanks to Hitmontop's abysmal move pool, we're free to set up six coils, maxing out our attack and defense. And accuracy, but who cares about that? We can then hit it with the Flame Wheel, which is a one-hit KO. Pangoro is next, but it also goes down to a single Flame Wheel. Surfetch is in after that, and it uses Detect, which really just gives us a little more time to recover with our leftovers, and it gets taken out by a single Flame Wheel. And finally, we have her Gigantamax Machamp. Machamp actually survives the Flame Wheel. But because our defense is so high, it smacks strike, hardly does anything to us, and it goes down the next turn, winning us our fourth gym badge. Once we leave the gym, we find that Bede has been keeping himself busy by vandalizing public monuments. Once we threaten to turn him into the police, he challenges us to a battle. But Sal karate chops the throat of every living thing in sight, easily sweeping his entire team and Bede is promptly arrested. Awesome. We make our way through the Glenwood Tangle where we find our next encounter, Elizabeth the Shenotic, who's also wanted on charges of drug dealing. We can also head back to the wild area where we catch Eduardo the Machoke. And there's <laughs> a funny story about him. He was actually caught in a craft store, dumping all of the glitter onto his balls. It was pretty nuts. Anyways, let, let's just move on to the next gym. This time we're against Opal, the fairy type trainer. She opens with her wheezing, and we send out Billy. We start off by landing a flame charge, leaving wheezing with over half its HP left before it lands a sludge, which unfortunately poisons Billy. So he's on a timer now. We land an Iron Head on the next turn, we fail to get the flinch, and Weezing lands another Slug, bringing us low. We probably could stay in, but I want to be on the safe side. So we swap into Albert, who takes a decent amount of damage from Sludge but survives, and we can outspeed and take Weezing out with a Scald on the next turn. Opal then sends in Togekiss, and then doubles our defenses, allowing us to survive Togekiss's Ancient Power attack. So, we're able to make quick work of it with a couple Scalds. After that, we have to deal with Mawile. We swap into Chloe, who doesn't take too much damage from a crunch, and a couple Razor Shells takes out Mawile. And finally, we have to deal with Gigantamax Alcremi. Our Razor Shell brings it below half HP, but it lands a G-Max Finale that takes out Chloe and restores a decent amount of its own HP. So, we bring in Elizabeth next. Unfortunately, we're outsped, and G-Max Finale takes out over half of Elizabeth's HP. And Sludge Bomb doesn't even come remotely close to getting us the KO. So, Elizabeth goes down the next turn. So, we bring in Mary next. And because that was Alcremi's third turn of Gigantamax, it returns to normal, and Mary's easily able to secure the kill with an Iron Head. 
winning us our fifth gym badge. With her out of the way, the level cap is raised enough for us to evolve Anne into a Barbarical, and just in time because we have another fight with Ha. He opens with his Trevenant, but it's outsped and taken out by a single Pyro Ball from Billy. Snorlax comes in next, so we swap into Anne as it uses Stockpile, boosting its defenses. We start stacking Hone Claws to boost our attack, and we use Skull Bash to raise our defense. Pretty soon, there's nothing Snorlax can really do about us, and it goes down. Rillaboom comes in next, and with a quad super effective grass type move, it could still take us out. So we swap into Clyde as it uses drum beating, only doing 13 damage. On the next turn, it outspeeds us and hits us with a knockoff, taking out a decent chunk of our HP, but our leech life restores most of that. And on the next turn, we can take it out with another leech life. Heatmore comes in next, but Clyde outspeeds it and hits it with a bite, causing it to flinch. So we can go for another bite, which also flinches it, and a third bite takes it out. All that's left is Hop's last Pokemon, a Boltund. We try to swap to Mary, but it just keeps using Roar and phasing her out. But eventually, it forces Billy in, who can take it out with a single Pyro Ball, winning us the fight. With him out of the way, we can go ahead and catch a few new Pokémon. Starting with our Wild Area encounter, we catch Henry the Drifloon, whose crime is kidnapping. At Route 7, we try to catch ourselves a Lipard, but it comes dangerously close to taking out some of our team members, so we're forced to flee. But we make up for this at Route 8, where we catch Grace the Pawniard, who's on the run from the law for illegal arms deals. And with that, we're ready to take on Gordy, the 6th gym leader. He opens with Barbarical, and we send out Bonnie. He tries to set up a Shell Smash against us, but that is surprisingly a bad idea, as we just take it out with one Giga Drain. You didn't see that coming. Shuckle is in next. We start hammering away with energy balls as it hits us with rock tombs. It gets a couple speed drops, but we still manage to outspeed it and finish it with a Giga Drain. Stonejourner comes in next. Thanks to Shuckle lowering our speed, Stonejourner outspeeds us and can use Wonder Room, swapping everyone's defense with their special defense. This gives Stonejourner enough special defense to survive being hit by an this gives Stonejourner enough special defense to survive being hit by Energy Ball, more than half its HP left. Bonnie could still stay in and probably take out Stonejourner, but I'd rather have a different Pokemon out when Gordy sends in his ace. So we swap into Eduardo as Stonejourner sets up a Stealth Rock. It hits us at the Body Slam on the next turn, dealing a solid amount of damage and paralyzing us before we can use Bulk Up. It lands two more body slams before we can finally land a low sweep, getting the KO. Wonder Room goes down, and in comes Gigantamax Colossal. It outspeeds and hits us with a Max Flare. But Eduardo, the Mad Lad, survives off of 1 HP, and he breaks through Paralysis to land a low sweep, taking out about a third of Colossal's HP. We then swap to Albert whose drizzle ability causes it to start raining. This cuts the power of the incoming Max Flare in half, letting us survive it quite handily, but that unfortunately sets up the sun, so the power of our water type moves are cut in half now. And because this is going to be Colossal's final turn of Gigantamax, we use Protect as it goes for a G-Max Volcalith and block most of the damage. And Colossal returns to normal, Wanting to stay as safe as possible, we swap into Mary on the next turn as it goes for a Rock Tomb. We don't take a lot of damage, and we can still outspeed it on the next turn and take it out with a Dig, winning us the fight and the 6th Gym Badge. Afterwards, we can evolve Henry into a Drifblin, and just in time for another fight with Hop. He sends out his Dub Wool, and because it only knows normal and fighting type moves, Henry is free to burn it with a Will-O-Wisp before setting up three stockpiles and taking it out with Gust. 
Snorlax comes in next. We outspeed and burn it with a Will-O-Wisp before it can land a Crunch. And between the attack drop and our boosted defenses, Crunch does next to nothing. But burning it is all we needed to do, so we swap into Eduardo. A couple low sweeps takes out Snorlax, and in comes Corviknight. We swap into Anne, who resists all of Corviknight's moves. It can hardly touch us, so we're free to take it out with just a few Razor Shells. Rillaboom comes in next, so we swap into Clyde as it goes for a drum beating, hardly doing anything to us. It hits us with a decently hard knockoff on the next turn, but we just restore all of that HP with a Leech Life that takes out Rillaboom. All that's left is Pincurchin, but it also goes down to a couple Leech Lifes, and with that, we've won the fight. With him out of the way, we're free to go for our next two encounters. In the wild area, we find Trevor the Clefairy. Now, you might think a Clefairy would be in trouble for illegal immigration, but Trevor actually came here legally on a work visa. What he's wanted for is Grand Theft Auto. We can immediately evolve him into a Clefable, but he also immediately dies while trying to catch our next encounter, Teach the Delmise. He's wanted for desecrating graves and now murdering Trevor. After that, we have another fight with Marnie. She opens with her Lycard, and we send out Henry. The only move Lycard knows that can actually hurt Henry is Sucker Punch. So we can easily stall out all five of its power points, and then we're free to take it out. Scrafty comes in next. We try to burn it with a Will-O-Wisp, but its Shed Skin ability keeps healing it. So we're forced to take it out with some Gusts. Toxicroak comes in next, but we're also able to burn it and take it out with Shadow Ball. All that's left is more Peko, but we're able to switch into Mary, who easily takes it out with a dig, winning us the fight. Right after this, we have a fight against Marnie's brother, Piers. He sends out his Scrafty, and we send out Eduardo. We start spamming low sweeps, but it's able to bring us down the low half HP before we take it out. Malamar comes in next, so we swap into Sal as it goes for a Psycho Cut, which we're immune to. We outspeed and use Pin Missile, unfortunately only hitting twice. So Malamar survives and can hit us with the Night Slash, not doing too much damage, and it goes down to a Pin Missile on the next turn. Obstagoon comes in next. We begin using Pin Missile again, not doing a ton of damage, and in return, Obstagoon uses Counter. Move that would deal double the damage it took this turn, but it looks like it only doubles the damage from one hit of Pin Missile. So, we're safe to keep spamming it. At one point we get pretty low on HP, but we can use Rest, completely healing us before Barry wakes us up. It's not long before Obstagoon goes down, and Skuntank comes in next. We swap to Mary, and a single dig takes it out, winning us our 7th gym badge. This time for our wild area encounter, we catch ourselves William the Frillish, who's also on the run for identity theft. We quickly evolve him into a Jellicent, and we're ready to take on Raihan, the last gym leader. He opens with Flygon and Gigalith, and we send out William and Albert. Now because Gigalith is slower than Albert, it means his ability activates last, so we'll be fighting in a sandstorm. But that's okay, because Albert's real purpose here is to bait out a Thunder Punch. We swap him out for Teach, who takes very little from a Thunder Punch. And William is free to KO Flygon with a single Ice Beam. And to end the turn, Gigalith sets up a Stealth Rock as Sandaconda comes in. Sandaconda is the fastest Pokemon on the field, and it hits Teach with a Fire Fang, bringing him below half HP before his berry heals him. William sets up an Acid Armor, doubling his defense, and Teach uses Rapid Spin, removing the Stealth Rocks from the field. Gigalith then hits Teach with a Rock Blast, bringing him down to just over a fourth of his HP. We then swap Teach out for our own Sandaconda. Raihan Sandaconda hits William hard with an Earth Power, but we hit back harder with an Ice Beam, just missing the KO, and Gigalith sets up another Stealth Rock. On the next turn, Mary outspeeds Raihan Sandaconda and lands an Earthquake, 
taking it out and damaging every other Pokemon on the field. William then uses Recover, restoring all of the HP he lost before Gigalith hits us with a Rock Blast, bringing him down to just over half HP. And finally, we have to deal with Raihan's Gigantamax Duraludon. It outspeeds and hits Mary with a Max Knuckle, dealing a solid amount of damage, and then Mary uses Dig. William uses Recover again, and Gigalith hits us with another Rock Blast, but we're walking away with more HP this time. On the next turn, Duraludon hits William hard with a Max Rockfall, and in turn, he's hit by Mary's Dig, leaving him at just over half HP. Fearing Duraludon might go for a G-Max Depletion, and that William could go down on the next turn, we swap him out for Albert, but our fears were unfounded, and Duraludon goes for a Max Rockfall, taking Albert out of the picture. In retaliation, Mary lands an Earthquake, taking out Gigalith and bringing Duraludon to the brink of defeat. We bring in Eduardo next, and because that was its third turn, it returns back to normal. We also swap Mary out for William, thinking Duraludon might use a fighting type move, but it just uses Breaking Swipe. Luckily, both of them survive, and Eduardo takes out Duraludon with a low sweep, winning us our 8th gym badge. With all the gyms beaten, we can catch the final two Pokémon of the run. Butch the Inkay, who has tried to take over the world one too many times. Butch is one, by the way. Mr. Mime might be the most obvious criminal for this route, but we, we don't want him on our team. No one does. Instead, we find Selina the Sneasel. We're also going to evolve the rest of our Pokémon here. Selena into a Weavile, Butch into a Malamar, Grace into a Bisharp, and Sal into Gene Simmons. With everyone evolved, we're ready to take on the Champion Cup. Our first opponent is going to be Marnie again. She starts with Lifeheart, and we send in Grace, who manages to take it out with a single low sweep. Scrafty is in next, so we swap into Clyde as it uses Brick Break. We don't take too much damage, and we restore all of our missing HP back on the next turn with Leech Life. But Scrafty hits us with a Swagger, so now we're confused. So, we're gonna swap into Eduardo as it goes for a Crunch, and we don't take too much damage once again. It outspeeds us and hits us with a Swagger, confusing us, and we hit ourselves, dealing a fair amount of damage. We're then hit by a Brick Break, bringing us below half HP, and Eduardo retaliates with a low sweep taking out Scrafty. Toxicroak is in next, so we swap back into Grace as it goes for a Venoshock, which we're immune to. It then hits us with a weak Sucker Punch, and we take it out with a Psycho Cut. More Pekka is next, so we swap back into Clyde as it uses Spark, and it paralyzes us. Fantastic. It hits us with a Torment on the next turn, stopping us from using the same move twice in a row. And luckily for us, we power through Paralysis and hit it with a Leech Life, KOing it and restoring all of our HP. Her Gigantamax Grimmsnarl is in last. We swap back into Grace as it uses G-Max Snooze. Not doing a lot of damage, but we're gonna go to sleep next turn, so we have to swap out. We swap back into Clyde as it goes for a Max Starfall, and since we resist it, it doesn't do a lot of damage. We then swap back into Grace as Grimmsnarl goes for a G-Max Snooze. This time it brings us below half HP, and once again, Grace is going to fall asleep next turn. Or it would if Misty Terrain wasn't set up by the Max Starfall from the previous turn. I'm going to pretend that this was my strategy all along and this wasn't just a lucky coincidence. Anyways, Grimmsnarl shrinks back down to normal, and two Metal Claws takes it out winning us the first fight. Next up is our final battle with Hawk. He sends out Dubwool, and we bring in Eduardo. It outspeeds and lands a Zen Headbutt, dealing a decent amount of damage, and we hit it with a low sweep in return. We just missed the KO, but that causes Hop to use his full restore, letting us get off two more low sweeps in a row, taking out Dubwool. Corviknight is out next, so we swap into Henry, but it uses Swagger confusing us. We decide to stay in and try to land a Thunderbolt, but that doesn't pan out and we're eventually forced to retreat. 
We bring in William next, but he doesn't fare much better, being brought down to under a fourth of his HP before managing to land a Will-O-Wisp, burning Corviknight. We bring Henry back in, who survives a drill peck on the switch off of just 4 HP. We then outspeed and land a Thunderbolt, but it's not nearly enough to take out Corviknight, and another drill peck takes out Henry. Luckily, his aftermath ability brings Corviknight to the brink of death, so we can bring Bonnie in and use Spiky Shield, blocking the drill peck and taking out Corviknight. And Kirchner is out next. So we hit it with a Leech Seed before we swap into William. All the while, it's just setting up curses. Between the Leech Seed and William's Recover, we're able to restore more HP than Pincurchin can deal with Thunderbolt. And it's not long before we're back at max HP and we can take it out with a Shadow Ball. Snorlax is in next, so we hit it with a Will-O-Wisp before it can use a High Horsepower, not doing a lot of damage to William. We then swap into Bonnie, who takes even less damage from high horsepower. We then land a Leech Seed on Snorlax, before it can land a Heavy Slam, dealing a bit more damage. We're then free to swap into Eduardo. Most of the damage Snorlax deals to him is immediately healed back, and we're free to set up a ton of bulk ups. Next in is Hop's final Pokémon, his Dynamax Rillaboom but none of its moves are doing a lot of damage to Eduardo, and it goes down to two Ice Punches, winning us this fight. Next up is our fight with Liliana. She starts with Frost Loss, and we send out Billy. She outspeeds and hits us with a Hex, not doing too much damage, and we retaliate with a Flame Charge, getting the one-hit KO. Melodic is in next, so we swap into William. And thanks to his Water Absorb ability, Milotic literally cannot even damage us. It takes a while, but eventually Milotic goes down too. Serena is in next, so we're swapping back into Billy. He hits us with an attract on the switch, and not wanting to deal with those shenanigans, we swap into Grace as it hits an acrobatics, not dealing a lot of damage. We outspeed on the next turn, and X Scissor takes it out. Salazzle comes in next, so we swap into Eduardo who has to tank and incinerate, and does so pretty well. It then outspeeds us and poisons us, but we land our bulldoze, getting the one-hit KO. All that's left is her Gigantamax Garbiter. It outspeeds and lands a Max Quake, dealing a solid amount of damage, but we survive and land a bulldoze in return. Thanks to Garbiter's weak armor ability, its defense is dropped, but its speed is raised. We're not going to be able to take another attack, so we swap into Mary, who has to take two Max Quakes before being able to land an Earthquake of her own. And thanks to the defense drop, it's more than enough to get the KO, winning us the fight. Next up is our final fight with B. He opens with Mawile, and we bring in Clyde. Thanks to his White Smoke ability, Mawile's Intimidate can't lower our attack, and we outspeed and take it out with a single Fire Lash. Gardevoir is in next. It outspeeds us and sets up a Calm Mind, and we hit it with a Fire Lash, just missing the KO, but also lowering its defense. Bead then uses a full restore, completely healing his Gardevoir, but then we get the one hit KO with Fire Lash. Rapidash comes in next, so we swap into Grace as it goes for a Psycho Cut, which we're immune to. It outspeeds and lands a Dazzle and Gleam, taking out about a fourth of our HP, and then we take it out with a single Iron Head. All that's left is his Gigantamax Hatterene. We swap into Billy as it goes for a G-Max Smite, taking out about a fourth of our HP and confusing us. So, we swap back into Grace as it goes for a Max Mindstorm, which we're immune to. We then swap back into Billy as it uses Max Flare, setting up the sun for us. Hatterene shrinks back to normal, and we go for a Pyro Ball, and we miss. Hatterene then hits a Psychic, bringing us low, and not wanting to risk another miss, we swap out. We bring Grace in, who's immune to the incoming Psychic, but knowing we probably won't survive a Mystical Fire, we swap into Clyde, who tanks it decently well. Clyde is then able to outdamage it with Leech Life, KOing it and getting us the win. Next up is our second fight against Nessa. 
she opens with the lysopod, and we send out Sal. It immediately goes for a first impression, but we use Obstruct, blocking the damage and cutting its defense in half. We can then outspeed and hit it with a Thunder Punch, bringing it down to about a fifth of its HP and forcing it to switch out. Seeking comes in next, so we swap into Teach as it goes for an Aqua Rune. It outspeeds us on the next turn and lands a Mega Horn, not dealing too much damage, and we're able to retaliate with a Power Whip, getting the one hit KO. Barraskewda comes in next, so we swap into Sal as it lands a Throat Chop for very little damage. We can then swap between using Iron Defense and Obstruct until we're at max defense and it's at minimum defense, and we can take it out with a single Thunder Punch. Glycopod comes back in, and thinking it's going for another first impression, we use Obstruct again, but this time Ness uses a full restore on it. So, two Thunder Punches ends up forcing it out. In comes Pelipper, but it goes down to a single Thunder Punch and Golisopod comes in once again. We block the first impression, and Thunder Punch takes it out. And all that's left is her Gigantamax Dreadnought. We hit it with a Seed Bomb, taking out more than half of its HP before it lands a critical hit Max Rockfall, nearly taking out Sal. But we hang on, and we can outspeed and hit it with another Seed Bomb on the next turn, taking it out and winning us the fight. Next up, our second fight with B. She opens with Halucha, and we send out Cassidy. We outspeed and land an Air Slash, just missing the KO as it uses Bounce. So, we swap into Anne before it lands, and it does very little damage to us. Expecting it to use High Jump Kick, we swap into William, but she uses her Full Restore now, healing Halucha. Knowing it'll go for another bounce, we swap back into Anne, and sure enough, it does. It comes back down, we land our Razor Shell, taking out more than half of its HP, and we can swap back into William as it goes for High Jump Kick, misses, and it faints. Surfetch comes in next, so we swap into Cassidy as it hits us with a Leaf Blade. We can outspeed on the next turn, and a critical hit Air Slash takes it out. Next in is Fallings, so we swap to Butch as it goes for Rock Tomb, not dealing too much damage. It outspeeds us on the next turn and uses Bulk Up, boosting its attack and defense, but we hit it with the Topsy Turvy, turning those stat gains into stat drops. It then goes for a close combat on the next turn, not dealing a lot of damage, and lowering its defense even further, so a Psycho Cut gets the one hit KO. Grappalocked comes in next, so we swap into William. And Grappalocked has no moves that can affect William, so we're free to set up three Acid Armors, boosting our defense to the max before we take it out with a couple Dazzling Gleams. All that's left is Gigantamax Machamp, but between our defense boosts and Recover, it has no chance of beating us. A few Dazzling Gleams later, and it goes down as well, winning us this fight. After this, we have another fight with Raihan. He starts with his Torkoal, and we send out Mary. Torkoal is immediately removed from this plane of existence with an Earthquake, and in comes Gudra. We outspeed and land another Earthquake, just missing the KO, and it uses Rain Dance. Raihan then uses his Forest Store, healing Gudra, but a second Earthquake does a little more damage, and it gets the KO. Turtonator comes in next, but Earthquake, it, it's dead. Flygon is up next, so we have to swap out for William as it sets up a Sandstorm. It hits us hard with Crunch, taking out more than half of our HP before our berry heals us. We go for a Will-O-Wisp, but we miss. Not sure if we can survive another Crunch, we have to swap out for Eduardo, who takes very little damage from Crunch. He then has to tank an Earthquake before he can land his Ice Punch, getting the one-hit KO. Finally, Gigantamax Duraludon comes in. It hits us with a Max Knuckle, leaving us with just 40 HP and raising its own attack. But in return, we land a Dynamic Punch, taking out a solid chunk of its HP and confusing it. On the next turn, however, it powers through Confusion and takes us out with a Max Steel Spike. 
Rest in peace, Eduardo. Mary comes in next. We survive another Max Knuckle very well before we land an Earthquake, just missing the KO. That was Duraludon's last turn of Gigantamax, so it shrinks back to normal. It goes for an Iron Head, dealing a very solid amount of damage to us, but we don't flinch, and we can land the second Earthquake, getting the KO, and winning us the fight. Well, before we get into the last few fights, we decide now is a good time to commit another crime. So we go grave robbing, and we get a, a rusted sword. Well, that, that was worth it. Anyways, let's get into our fight with Chairman Rose. He opens with his Escavalier, and we send out Billy. Now, I, I don't know when this happened, but Billy must have gotten brain damage somewhere along our journey. Because we tell him to use Fire Punch, and he kicks the bug. And he doesn't just do this once, he does this five times in a row. The first four, he gets the KO, but unfortunately, against Gigantamax Copperaja, he fails to get the KO, and in return, he's taken out by a Max Quake. But luckily, Mary can come in and finish the job with her own Earthquake. Afterwards, we have to deal with Eternatus, but it's no match for Mary's Earthquake spam. For the Gigantamax portion of the fight, we just spam Dig, so we're not even on the field for half of Eternatus' attacks, and it quickly goes down for the second time. We're forced to catch him, and while Eternatus may be a criminal for trying to destroy the world or something, we're, we're not going to use him. We watch these two dogs fly off into the sunset, and all that's left is to take on the champion, Leon. Our team for this last fight is going to be Mary the Sandaconda, Clyde the Sentiscorch, William the Jellicent, Teach the Delmise, Anne the Barbarical, and Selena the Weavile. Well, let's get into it. Leon opens with Aegislash and we send out Mary. Knowing he's going to start with King's Shield, we take this time to set up our Stealth Rocks. And on the next turn, we can land an Earthquake, getting the one-hit KO. Inteleon comes in next. So, we swap into William, blocking Inteleon's incoming Water-type attack. We're then able to use a couple Energy Balls to take it out while it lowers our attack stats. Dragapult is in next, and with our special attack cut in half, we have to swap out. So we bring in Mary, who's hit by a Shadow Ball on the Switch activating her ability, causing a sandstorm. And this is important, because Mary tanks one more Shadow Ball before landing an Earthquake, just missing the KO on Dragapult, but the sandstorm ends up taking it out. Mr. Rhyme comes in next. We outspeed it and hit it with an Iron Head, just missing the KO, and it takes out Mary with a Freeze Dry. We send in Clyde next. Leon uses a full restore on his Mr. Rhyme now, but it doesn't matter because one leech life is enough to take it out. Haxorus is in next. It outspeeds us and hits us with an Outrage, bringing us below half HP before we can land a Fire Lash, not dealing too much damage to it. And on the next turn, a second Outrage hits, and Clyde goes down. William comes back in, Axorus outspeeds us, but it hits itself in confusion, and an Ice Beam takes it out. Last up is his Gigantamax Charizard. Because we set up the Stealth Rocks, it's entering the fight at half HP. It outspeeds us and lands a Gigantamax Overgrowth, but because William is very specially defensive, and he's holding the Assault Vest, it doesn't end up doing too much damage, and we can retaliate with a Surf just missing the KO. Charizard lands a Max Rock Ball on the next turn, but that's in vain, because we survive it handily, and one more Surf takes out Charizard, winning us the run. Honestly, this went way better than I expected. We didn't even have to use half of our team members. The credits roll, and I've gotta say, there is a criminal amount of cringe in this credit sequence. Anyways, I've been Hex to see. Thanks for watching.